Hello everyone, we are at IELTS Disha today and many of you don't know that she is an IELTS educator who has worked with uh, an academy and preferably I would like to have a conversation with her about what and what not she has been through but plus I want to tell people about her that she has published her two books, she's a bilingual author, she has published her books in English and French and let's go hop on to the conversation with her. So as we guys have seen that she has mentioned a tagline which says that enriching lives through education, I'll be so thriving on having this conversation with her because you see, I'm not intellectual enough. Anyways, so hopping on to the first question, I would like you to say hello to my audience first. Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. Alright, so I would like to question you that you always wanted to become an IELTS coach, educator and you always had this thing that you know I want to grow up and be an IELTS educator. Since childhood I'm an avid reader and I always have a bent of mind towards teaching. Thinking about IELTS, no, that was all of a sudden. But yes, uh, since I was good in English language and I've taught many, many of my classmates, my friends, and there was my friend in plus two. Her good name is Jaspreet. She's in Canada right now. One day she disclosed her dream to migrate to Canada after giving IELTS academic exam. Jasprit as she belongs to a remote area and her schoolist, schoolistic education was not that good. She, uh, she approached me and said that would you please guide me all the grammatical things and without having any second thought I said yes of course why not. I gave her some lessons, I gave her some structures, some designs, some grammatical rules that she can follow and luckily Fortunately, she got 80 marks uh, in her English exam in plus two and she cleared IELTS exam as well. She later congratulated me and thanked me and gave me an insight that why don't you become an IELTS trainer. She took simultaneously coaching from Ludhiana, an institute, very famous institute. And she said that why what you are doing sitting at home, why you are not revealing your talent, why you are hiding it, you got such an uh, immense talent of teaching. So without having any second thought, I thought that yeah, I can pursue it. But I always wanted to do MA in English after giving my entrance test. Uh, in PU, I got selected and I was one of those 60 students among lakhs of students who uh, cleared the entrance test and I started, I commenced my MA English classes. There, in my hostel, there was a girl who was looking for a job, part-time job so that, you know, she can manage her expenses. And I have never thought of doing any kind of part-time job in my life. I was very studious, a bookworm, a bibliophile. I was into books only. After my hours of uh, learning, I used to go to hostel and after that having my lunch, I used to go to library carrying my heavy bag of shoulder and uh, learning everything. So one day that girl approached me and said, would you please accompany me in giving an interview to an, uh, uh, the institute which provides coaching to bank students. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I won't mind. And we both went there and I taught her, on the way I taught her some of the skills that, you know, interviewer can ask you about your strengths, your weaknesses, what you have achieved in your life. I just said her that to be confident and to not lose your heart. So we both went and uh, when uh, she went through the interview and after that, uh, that interviewer, she uh, asked me that what you are doing and when I interacted with that person, he said, why don't you also join the institute and give coaching and enlighten the students? I said, okay. The pay scale was nothing. It was just 300 rupees per hour. And I said, okay, money is secondary. I mean, experience matters a lot. 
I said, okay, I won't mind. I started teaching and I taught there two, three months and after that my exams were approaching. I said, no, I shall consider on my studies only. So that was the time I think I realized that I can be a good teacher and I can make students understand things. I can work upon their weak points and I can inspire them to study hard and achieve their goals. So Sorry. that was the first stage of my life when I realized that yes, I can be a teacher. I was all right, so having said all that, you have been a friend in need, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I just want to know that you were talking about earning 300 rupees per hour, right? Yeah. So basically, it lands up to another question which says that starting a journey from almost 300 rupees per hour to, you know, what not now. So, do you believe, because I'm a firm believer of every opportunity is a golden opportunity, do you believe that every opportunity is a golden opportunity and you have to grab, grab that opportunity for another one? Certainly, yes. You should always embrace everything, whatever comes in your way, positive of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, you always learn something from that. Never think the highs and the belows of that thing. Always look for the brighter side. Every point has two sides. Like, obviously the inherited downsides of that thing will come along. But you should always look for the brighter side. Do not look for the pay scale. Do not look for the other factors. If it suits you, if you are getting positive vibes, you should embrace it gracefully because obviously you will learn a lot, a lot of things. Practical exposure is the best exposure. Alright. So being a bibliophile and then being a bookworm, all your school journey, all your college journey, what's your favorite genre? My favorite genre? is obviously about that woman empowerment my favorite writer is uh, Charles Bronte Jane Eyre I, I can still uh, you know I can still scan those uh, lines from my book where it was mentioned that a small little girl from a small town touched heights I think it's all about determination your willpower what I have learned from Jane Eyre being often being uh, raised and uh, uh, being taught by under such severe circumstances how she has grown to be a teacher and uh, how she led her life and how she has become an inspiration for the women around the world that if you have strong willpower if you have determination you can march towards a path of success you can have that crowning achievement in your life Nobody can stop you if you have that willpower in you. All so, right. Jane Eyre. So, yeah, nobody can stop her. Anyways, I want to ask you one thing that you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, your LinkedIn profile, and then you have, you're on Pinterest. You have your own website, right? Yeah. So, over the years, six years now, I could definitely say that you are pro at being one man army. You don't yeah. have anybody. Tell yeah. people that you don't have any manager or something. <laughs> That's just unbelievable. So how do you manage your time? Because with within six years, anybody is pro at it. How do you manage that? I firmly believe time management is the key backbone for any successful thing in our life. And that it is true. I've never hired anyone for any kind of advertisements or any kind of person handling my social media accounts. Because I believe if you are good at one thing, you can manage everything. Uh, this INTS is not my profession, it has my heart and soul. So everything, whatever I have put, uh, like any blog, any post, it has my heart. So the other person won't be able to do it that effectively. That's why I do my work, everything by myself. And what does the social uh, media people do? I mean, no offenders, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they just take the money, obviously they are ruling the world. And they very smartly, they play with the Google words and your institute or your thing, your product uh, comes in the up, up list. That whatever you Google and that thing comes in the up thing so that people can click it and they can go to that institute but i am a very authentic person i believe in authentic things i've never done such things what i do i regularly post my results 
my YouTube videos, my writing articles, so that students should read, they should get the material. How students approach me, it's all because of my material, writing skills, that's why students approach me, it's not because I'm playing with the Google AdWords or I've hired someone yeah. or my institute is on the topmost list and they are able to see it, no. Students usually actually address me as, ma'am I have learned apparently word from you because I use it, nobody use it. So these are the things which I actually brought into IELTS, a kind of revolution that do not stick to this stuff. There are many things that you can do. Open up your origins and you can achieve your goal. Alright. So you brought many things in IELTS, right? Definitely. I just want to ask you one thing that there is an incident which you were telling me about getting scammed by YouTube. <laughs> I really want you to tell people about it. Not scamming exactly, but yeah. there was a hardship which you had to go through, which you had to go through during your YouTube period. So could you just tell it to people? Uh, being naive, I'm still naive in all such uh, digital things. I'm not that pro in handling such things. So I've made many videos, and my YouTube channel was running good. But you know, when people grow, there are always opponents uh, who throw something yeah. you know on you to let you down. There are people who are envy of you, who are who cannot handle your success rate. So exactly happened with me. Uh, there were a group of people who tried to let me down, and they have given fake strikes. They have given many things over my YouTube channel, and unluckily, I lost that channel. Uh, it was really doing well but I believe that one should not get disheartened over one thing there is always an opportunity that you can stand stand tall and you can put all your efforts again so I restarted my YouTube channel and now it is running well alright so that's a great thing <laughs> so I was in conversation with you earlier as well and uh, I came to know one thing that you have been the first IELTS educator of an academy. Mind you guys, first educator of IELTS on an academy. And they approached you. Yeah, right? they approached So me. what's that story? I mean, I want to know. As I've already mentioned that my writing skills are really appreciated by everyone. Not just students, but also scholars, researchers, IELTS experts, IDP. Authorities even congratulated me for my book when I published it. So they have a charm, I believe. That's why people appreciate it, admire it. So one day, I think um, three years back, I received a call from an academy. And they said that, as you know, an academy is the biggest online uh, education platform. And they have everything, every kind of course. And IELTS is a booming industry. Why an academy was like, why we are lacking like behind? We should also uh, provide such courses to their aspirants. So uh, that guy approached me and said that we want to launch IELTS course and we want you to launch it. And I very straightforwardly I asked him, why me? There are tons of trainers across the globe. You can hire anyone. And I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own classes all the day long so I won't be able to even manage time I, that was my words actually so he said no we have seen your YouTube videos and the very line he quoted that you teach because it's your passion and students correlate with you they can understand your words they feel that yes this thing is right you make them understand well you are not doing this because it's your profession only. You are not only minting money, you are winning hearts. That was the line he quoted and he actually, you know, won my heart as well by saying it. And I said, yes, okay, I'll be able to do it. And I used to make all the presentations. Even you can uh, go to an academy's page and you can search IELTS Nisha. Yes. Surely you'll see my videos, my presentations. And I worked there for, I think, three four months and after that I was it was cumbersome for me to manage my time because I'm a single entity a single woman handling everything so it was quite
quite cumbersome for me to handle but it was a good experience i even got that i had that uh, an academy t-shirt and they shared their ipad with me i do have that stuff with me and i was the topmost educator there after that they hired many other as uh, educators so students i received many calls i used to receive many messages from the students that ma'am please post on this as well post on this as well i used to take mock test everything so it was running well all right so as they say that with great opportunity comes great responsibility and there is no doubt you yeah, have a challenge over here there right <laughs> so like in the span of 6 years i'm sure it's getting difficult day by day right yeah and that's nice that's quite nice but what do you think that competence out there in the market ielts coaching there are many thousands of ielts institutes right so do you think that there is competitiveness and you have to buckle up more <laughs> competitiveness see competitiveness is in everything and since day one i'm into this like since i since i have been topper i got scholarship in graduation i've been uh, topper in everything i was the best player of my school and then i was the best uh, state level player as well district player level player as well so i've achieved many things in my life and i believe i get a kick in the competition i i shower everything which i have to my students competition they have open the institute but they are not running by themselves they have hired a teacher for a certain period of hours who does her work or his work and they leave i am always available for my students even in the odd hours uh, though i always get uh, you know being scolded by my family that you are um, you are mad you are totally mad for your classes but that's really true i am ever welcome not only for my students i get tons of queries on my instagram account some students call me and say ma'am please uh, your voice is really you know enchanting you the way you deliver your message we get motivated i have received such messages from students so they call me i i want to quote one incident there was a guy uh, who were having his speaking test on that day and couple of minutes before he just called me and said ma'am i'm your huge fan would you please wish me all the best maybe your wish would turn my day and will make my day and i'll get my desired score and i just said to him that be confident be fluent do not stop do not stop just warm it out whatever you have in your heart display everything the examiners are really good even they motivate you silently they motivate you to speak more so do not hide yourself be yourself and after her speak uh, after her speaking test he called me up and said ma'am your words have really made my day i had an amazing speaking test i don't know what will be the score but i had really enjoyed the session so i think that kind of things make my day so and that's priceless I mean, yeah that's priceless that's priceless. That's, priceless. that's priceless so i've never thought about competitions and all because minting money is not only my aim as as nisha says enriching life through education i want to always enrich life through education and i am working on it and in future also i want to work on it all right so uh, before i ask you the next question i want my listeners to know that she was uh, taking coaching for ias exam because her dad <laughs> always wanted her to be an ias officer so i just want to know that you were a merit student right yeah you were intellectual and i'm sure if you would have studied for it you would have tried hard for it yeah. because you always go behind what you want and yeah. you would have cracked it what made you back off and you know what i want to go for ielts coaching only <laughs> why that um uh, it was like that i my father enrolled me in an institute that is in sector 26 chandigarh i guess mahatma right. gandhi institute very renowned institute in my city and my father wanted me to be an ias officer being always studious bookworm and the merit list he used to say just i want to get that you know uh, red sari car at my home right. and i want you to be in the uniform so i really tried to pursue his dream 
and uh, the six months went well. I used to study a lot. I think I used to study 18 hours a day. I have mugged up NCRTs. I used to, uh, you know, mug up that Hindu newspaper every day. I used to make notes. Everything I used to do, my whole room was surrounded by maps, maps, maps everywhere so that the moment I wake up, I can see the directions, I can see the geographical boundaries, everything, glaciers, so that I know the movements, so that yeah. I can score good um, marks in it, so that I can approach it. One day, when sitting in the classroom, uh, there was a lecture, maths, there was a maths teacher who was uh, teaching us quant and aptitude and I, I don't know why I realized that I, I won't be able to do in this subject well because I was good in other subjects, uh, all the other subjects, public administration, science, everything, geography, all were good but this, the one thing I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I was not feeling comfortable in having that and I'm very quick, if I'm not liking anything, if, I'm, if I got the negative vibes, I immediately quit that thing. I'm very quick in it. Very instantly, I, I stood up and I asked my teacher, Sir, can I please leave the class? Everybody in the classroom started staring, oh my god, what happened to her? Yeah. And tears rolled out from my eyes and Sir said, are you fine, Nisha? And I said, no, I want to leave the class. I packed my bag and I rushed to home crying. And I said, my father, please, I don't want to go for IAS. I, this is not my cup of tea. I realized that, no, it's not me. I was not feeling well over there. So my class, everybody, my classmates, my companions, they mocked at me. They called me covert. They, they gave me so many names. Even the manager of that institute, he called my father that your daughter is really incredible, she possesses amazing skills and she can be an IS officer. Motivate her to try once at least for themselves, yeah. at least not for me, for themselves because they have a faith, they have a firm belief that I can crack it. But I don't know whether it was like this time to be an IELTS trainer. I was so rigid. Otherwise, I'm not at all rigid person. I'm very flexible. And to me, if my parents have given command, that is like everything I have to follow it. And I follow it wholeheartedly. But that day when I said that, please, I said, I called my father, Daddy G. I said, Daddy G, please, I, I don't want to go for IAS. I packed my books of IAS and I gave it in a library, all the notes which I used to make. For a week, I was in a room thinking, what shall I do? What shall I do? And suddenly, uh, when my maid was mopping the floor, she came across one pamphlet and there was it was written, need an IAS trainer. That institute was behind my house only. I like grabbed that and yeah. I went there and I had an amazing conversation with the owner and they said ma'am please most welcome. The, the way he took my interview, he took me to the classroom, there was nobody. He said I am your student, I am your student and he gave me that newspaper that this is a newspaper, I am your student, you are a teacher, what would you teach me from this newspaper? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, and I picked something, I uh, gave some of the vocabulary words, I gave some motivational speech, whatever clicked me, I did that, and I even gave him a game, like this is the thing, and what else you can think about it, yeah. that's a memory game, Great that you know, yeah, that you know, my teachers used to do when I was in third and fourth, I think credit goes to them, them, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely, <laughs> so the interview went really well, and uh, that was the best thing I think I did in my life. The very first step I marched towards this IELTS thing. That institute taught me PT, TOEFL, everything that, that is in the market for this entrance test to settle abroad. And the owner of the institute, Lata Ma'am, she was, she is extremely popular for her books. She not only has IELTS books, she has other examination books as well. And the institute used to teach multi courses, language courses as well. What one day uh, my sir said to me that I am giving you, he used to give me timer that you have 5 minutes, mug it up. He used to train me like this, you have 30 seconds, mug this 10 lines. 
so uh, one day he said that this is a book and you have to do the reading comprehension solve it within 20 minutes there were 35 questions i said okay sir i'll do it i've done in 20 minutes and when i said sir it's done he said that ma match the answer key when i matched the answer my four answers were wrong and i was so sure that it cannot be wrong it was very easy so i asked sir that sir i think the answer key is wrong lata ma'am was there uh, she said oh really the answer key is wrong and you are right will you please pardon me i said ma'am yes even you can have a second glance over the answer key the answer keys are wrong yeah because i have full faith on my reading skills uh she i think she got a minor attack at that time when i said that. and immediately immediately she received a call from bangalore a publication house and they said that ma'am your book has some errors because students are complaining and book was the same which i solved in the morning she was like she gave a book to me like this you have 72 hours go through this book and whatever the wrongs are there correct them correct the answer key and i was like ma'am there are more than 50 test you have given me 72 hours how i'll do it she said do it and i did it i think my skimming and scanning skills developed from there i got an insight how books are written and how it should be edited and thank you lata ma'am for being so strong <laughs> <early. laughs> and yeah i i did all the corrections not in 72 hours of course i'm not that <laughs> yeah but i did it in a week and um, like this only i got many books corrected those sir ajay sir said to me that they will mention my name and they have never mentioned my name but i am always grateful to them for teaching me such amazing skills amazing skills right. so that was a time i think i have learned how books are written how it is being edited how this institute process works i used to get involved in everything they have given me simultaneously personality development classes interview preparation classes they used to have students from infosys i used to teach them i mean i used to be younger of them and i used to teach them that was an amazing experience of my life i used to make notes everybody was like we want to study from nisha ma'am we want to study from nisha ma'am because i was keen on teaching i was enthusiastic <laughs> so anybody who said her called her that you're a coward uh, yeah pretty much she is great <laughs> when you know when your gut knows that yeah. you are meant to be somewhere, somewhere else, else and in order to be somewhere else you want to be you have to leave something which you are doing yeah so guts bro it's it's guts <laughs> all right so you have also published your books right yeah, yeah. in french and in english yes right? i'm a bilingual author yeah so there's a lot of competition in market that's another sort of thing but there are ultimately thousands of books and thousands of ielts books right what made you think that you know i have to publish my book and this is the thing in my book which is going to make it stand out what was that thing there what was, was a thought? time when i received a call from canada like okay. over a night i was having foreign students and they were saying ma'am we want your writing notes I have been saying that why my writing notes are getting so popular like what makes them stand out with other material so I read other books I won't mention the author's name I read other books and I I actually saw that the other books contains only sample answers question answer question answer from the past exams they were not set defined format we indians are always developed like spoon feeding yeah. we need something we need something like we are depending on grammatical rules that subject plus verb plus object we cannot break this rule yeah. we cannot Definitely. so i actually linked it with that yes student psychology they need something to you know mug up first and then they can write well i created my own structures 6 years back i created my own distinctions of writing task too they were not well defined pattern i created my own pattern that yes 
students there is a type discuss both views and give your opinion then there is a different type agree disagree and they both have a different structure that you need to follow you need to follow a different set of pattern and format so with my own intelligence i have put everything set i created around 10 formats and in january i have added one more format because the more the exams come we come to know what change has been done so i have uh, generated 11 formats for the students in my book the very first thing i did i mentioned all the formats with a structure so that students have an idea that these are the type of questions they can get in the question paper and this is how they have to deal okay the second thing which i worked upon the, there is a phobia among general students that they cannot get seven bands in writing come on i faced eight bands in writing in my first attempt seven years back so i was like what mistakes they are committing the very first mistake they are over exceedingly writing and what they were doing they were writing so many polished words like everything should have a balance whether it is a life or whether it is a ielts writing it cannot be 100% very high vocabulary words having no connectivity with the previous and the next sentence exactly. they were just they were just putting those words like some trainer have taught them these polish words uh, the elite words they were Which just vocab. polishing it yeah. having no connectivity making no sense then i came out with another stuff known as collocation students were totally unaware of these terms like i i can still remember it's true it's really true many students asked me and many of the trainers asked me ma'am what does collocation mean you use this term so much what does it mean i taught them that collocation means the combination of two words you say significance in your writing why can't you write paramount significance Okay. so these were the things the reform which i brought into the writing the second thing i worked upon the conditions like conjunctions which we have read in our school days no sooner than perhaps yeah. either or neither nor not only but also there are many sentences what we used to say compound complex sentences okay. and what ielts writing demand it demand complex writing then why you can't put such things in your writing and score your bands so these are the things that i brought and obviously these were extraordinary these were new to the students they welcomed it whole heartedly and they are using it and they are getting their desired bands <laughs> so hopping on to the my favorite and last question of the day practically i haven't ever seen you in a guest lecture definitely yeah. i have it you know yeah i just want to know one thing that if you were to be in a guest lecture and you have to talk to people yeah what would you say and you have to sum it up in like 3 minutes and you don't have to talk about and you don't have to talk about ielts yeah. you just have to talk about fundamentals of life right yeah and what all is required to the team first of all yeah. i would say thank you for giving me this golden opportunity because i always wanted to be a motivational speaker <laughs> i never get a chance in my life so thank you so much and i would say that there are many students there are many people who think that they should step out from home to become something yeah they should step out they should get good exposure in their life believe me I haven't gone anywhere in my life. Whatever I have done, sitting in my own room under the four walls of the house. So this is a message to all the girls, to all the women who have that inspiration in them that they want to achieve something in their life, but they cannot step out from home due to some obligations, restrictions, family responsibilities, or anything other, etcetera, etcetera, factor. Please, you have everything. If you have this, if you have this, you can achieve everything in your life. Anything. Just sit and make a blueprint. What things you needed, have it. The time when I wrote my book, it was COVID. Like we all uh, went through the COVID uh, wave, yeah. pandemic. So amid COVID nineteen, the institutes, everything was shut. We were locked in a room. I was like, what shall I do now? I have nothing to do, 
and I opened my laptop and there was a blog my dream and one time I mentioned that I want to be an author I immediately like within a flip within a flip of seconds I said that okay now I have to type my own book and seriously I typed my book by my own hands I haven't hired any typewriter I have I have this both books typed by my own hands everything the front page the back page everything being done by myself so please do not restrict yourself that you are not working under any MNCs you are not working under any renowned thing no do things that make you a renowned one so that people should approach you and I want to share one more incident when I left that classroom uh, that IAS and there were total 60 students and the head the, the owner of the institute who called my father very strangely three years back his son approached to me for the IELTS classes I gave him classes and one day at home he was reading through my book and when his father saw the picture he was like she is Nisha she is Nisha and his son said Manav Manav said yes she is my IELTS trainer I, I cannot express that feeling he yeah. got tears in his eyes that this girl was actually born to shine not as an IS officer but this he called my father he said I want to salute your daughter that wow she has achieved another milestone she has worked so hard that people in her area only want to take classes from her my own son is taking classes from her so that was that was like I have achieved something in my life. The purpose of my living has been fulfilled and it really feels good. I felt myself walking in air that day. I want to tell each and every one of you to not think that this work is low or you will not get that productive outcome. Please start working upon your dreams. Start dreaming. Set goals. Working on it. Success has no full stop. It has always commas. If one is done, grab the other one. The other is done. Achieve the other one. There are many things in life that we can do. <laughs> so pretty much you want to say that if there is a will, there is a way. There is a way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, alright. So it was and great. God help those who help themselves. Them themselves. Please do not rely on everything on destiny. Come on. You can do hard work. You can achieve your things. God can definitely hand you the book. He yeah. can definitely hand you the pen. He just yeah. wants you to hold the pen and write. And he'll write along with you. Yeah. But you have to make that move in order to have that. Definitely. And you know what? Well said. As people say, and I, I have heard from someone that when they are in their hands, they are in their hands. Right? So, it, it's, everything starts from you, right? Yeah. Alright. So it was great having a conversation with you. <laughs> it was you. lovely. It was uh, ultimately, I mean, just as I always say that, it's enlightening. <laughs> and it was great having you on board. This is Valerie Sharma signing off. Thank you so much. Thank you.